Hello YouTubers, this is going to be a video showing the assembly of my triple chain ring freeline crank. I wanted to shoot this video for you because I haven't seen a whole lot of them online uh, showing how these are put together, especially one that has triple chain rings. So hopefully this might give you some ideas in case you want to build one of these on your own. So all these parts are the ones I'm going to be using and I'm going to start with going through and explaining each one. These are the triple chain rings I'm going to be using, a 22, a 32, and a 44 tooth chain rings set. And they came from this crank. And so this crank originally when I got it had these little mounting brackets on it and all the chain rings are held in place with these. So I'm going to be using these same brackets to hold the chain rings in place on my design. So this in itself doesn't work with the free wheel. There's no threads on it. And so unless I want to use this as a big giant paperweight, this is pretty much useless, so I'm going to get rid of it. The crank I'm going to use is this one. This is a special uh, freewheeling crank because you can see there it's got the threads on it. And so that's the one I'm going to be using. And it's going to be fitting this freewheel that I have right here. This freewheel I got from Sick Bike Parts. It's a heavy duty one. I'm hoping it'll last a long time. It's a lot thicker and built better than the other ones in most normal kits. And you can see there I've already mounted it to this giant drive sprocket. This has got 56 teeth and this will connect directly to the motor itself. And these kind of sprockets normally come off of those gasoline powered kits. These would typically be mounted on the spokes of a bicycle um, and used as a drive. However, I'm going to be putting it directly onto the crank. So I had to modify the holes on here. Originally there were nine holes here, as you can see, and I had to drill some to fit the uh, free wheel. And then the other holes that you see there are for the sprocket, because this is a four bolt pattern on it. And so I wanted to drill some bolt holes to hold that. So this sprocket is not only gonna be a drive sprocket, but it's also gonna be an adapter to fit all this together. So as you can see, it took me more than once to get the alignment correct on that. With a power drill, it's difficult to make that perfectly centered, but uh, this is the best I could do, and I think it's pretty well centered, just slightly off, but it'll be good enough. So I'm gonna start assembling this for you so you can see how this is put together. So I start with the sprocket, and then I'm gonna put these bolts through. And these bolts here, each of them is gonna have eight washers on it, and the, uh, the washers, are there to provide the right spacing between the drive sprocket and the 20 or 44 that I'm going to put on first. The spacing has to be correct. You don't want to have the chains close to each other because if those two chains happen to hit each other, then that's not going to be good at all. So once these are all in place, now I'm ready for the first sprocket. So this is that 44 tooth sprocket chain ring that's there so notice I had to do some grinding on it to make it fit over the washers that are here so this goes upside down in place like this over the bolts next one is the 32 tooth chain ring and so before I put that on I have to have the bright spacing in it and so that way it'll change gears the way it's supposed to so that's why I have these little brackets that are here and so I'm going to put these on each one and when this is in place they're going to rise up and provide the right spacing in between so when I put this on right now you'll see that these are rising up and so now these little posts that you see right here these are threaded and so these will accept the 22 tooth. Now before I put that one on though, I want to make sure that all these are tightened down first. So I couldn't use regular bolts on these because if I did, it would block the chain from shifting. So I had to find another way of doing that. And so what I'm using is these here, they're, they're uh, brad screws or I guess they're um, post, uh, binding posts, I guess is what you'd call them. And they're originally circular and I grinded them down to make it fit the grooves that are right here. So each of these will get screwed in. And if you notice that when I screw, tighten these down here, that it's flush against the chain ring. And so that way it's not gonna block 
the change from shifting or at least that's the idea so we'll we'll see how that works in in real time but in theory that's hopefully it should work that way Let's put that one on and then here's the final one and then once this is in place like this I'm going to go ahead and tighten these up from the back okay so just do that quick tighten I'll, I'll uh, use a ratchet on these before I put it on my bicycle but for video purposes I'm just going to hand tighten these for now so you can get the idea okay so now these middle posts are ready for the 22 tooth and I'm using the original bolts that came with the uh, chain ring set okay it's much easier if you buy a triple chain ring to use get one that has the removable chain rings on it because that way you have these bolts that you can use and you don't have to worry about the rivets because rivets those are really hard to take off because you got to drill through them and I just don't have the right tools to make that easy to do so that's why I wanted to get these removable chain rings instead that way I got these bolts on here that I can put in and use that as part of my design so now all these are in place as you can see there and this is going to be the finished assembly and now here's what it looks like from the side so it'll basically spin like this and the pedals will remain stationary and you can see the spacing in there is correct there's just enough in there to where the chains aren't close to each other and it lines up with the bicycle with the gears that are already on there already I already checked it out already so now all I have to do is screw on this crank and I'll be done notice that this crank I had to put a groove in there to fit with the bolts that are sticking out there these are far enough to weigh to where they're not in the room they have enough room there so now when I put all this together it'll be complete so hopefully that video was helpful for you if you wanted to put one of these together yourself this is is real solid especially once I tighten all of it down so I'm hoping to get many years of use out of it so now I just got to put it in my bike and test it out Okay, YouTubers, I finished tightening down the freewheeling crank, and so now you can see how it works there. The motor will spin the drive sprocket, and the pedals remain stationary. So now it's time to put it onto the bicycle, and putting that on there like so. You see that it's perfectly lined up with the front motor sprocket and the back sprockets are lined up with the sprockets in back so everything seems to be in place so now all I have to do is tighten all this up put the chains on and in a later video I will show you the bike running with this new system in place so that's the end of my video thank you very much for watching